This presentation is going to be about the American photographer Jeremy Ulsman. The layout for today's presentation is as follows. A bit about Jeremy, what made him so different from every other photographer out there at the current time, what his work means to himself, how his work impacts others, the extent of his success and my personal response to viewing his photography. Jeremy was born in Detroit in 1934 and went to Rochester Institute of Technology where he studied fine art before going to Indiana University. During high school, he always enjoyed photography as a hobby and even took a part-time job assisting in a photography studio. He is well known for his negative multi-layer images, also known as gelatin silver print photo montage. His work questioned the medium and played with different realities. In comparison to other works at the time, his work was often viewed by others as not photography, but art. At the time, things such as photography and art didn't mix. Oil painting was for art and cameras were for photography, but it was Jeremy who changed this. Jeremy became so relevant in the creative community due to his use of layering and multiple negatives. While multiples and negatives were nothing new, as it had been around for many years, Jeremy revived it with his use of exposure, drastic variations in object size, and how he approached his work emotionally to create an emotional and different response. As you can see, these are two examples of Jeremy's work, where he uses multiple layers and negatives to create images. Unlike many photographers at the time, Jeremy did not intend his work to look realistic, but instead offer an alternative reality to the viewers. In an interview, Jeremy states that what changed his future forever was when he was in the darkroom one day and began to think that if he worked with different negatives in multiple enlargers and moved the paper, that he could change the amount he could do drastically. He could have an endless amount of creative freedom. And from that day forward was where his use of negative multiples began. He first experimented with multiple negatives in the 50s, but he states that he really got into it when he went to Florida in the 60s. He himself has openly talked about what he wants to get out of his work in interviews. He always insists that what he wants out of the audience is never a specific emotion, but rather a spiritual journey where each person comes to their own conclusion. Perhaps they are reminded of something or someone, happy, angry or sad. He mentions that he does not use colour because colour itself can alter the message of something, whereas black and white allows for an image to speak for itself. When asked about his creative process, Jeremy mentions that it all starts with the camera. Once he has it, he views the world completely different. He becomes far more connected and views everything as potential to be placed in an image, perhaps in the background, foreground, or as a central piece. Everything has possibility, but he doesn't pick things out intentionally to create a specific feeling. He believes it is all subconscious, even to himself. He believes he is the carrier of symbolic intent and merely an image maker, trying to relate with other people and himself. Next up, I'll be talking about how Jeremy's work impacted others. I picked out this specific story because I thought it really connected to what Jeremy wants out of his work, which is a spiritual path. An instance when a viewer's thoughts really impacted the work that Jeremy made was when he was in a lecture in Boston in 1982. He showed a piece he believed to be quite zen-like and thought that Minor White would have liked this. Minor White was another photographer at the time, but he had passed away. Straight afterwards, Jeremy showed one of his pieces, which was a wave with a small lone bow. That's the one that you can see on the left there. After Jeremy had finished his lecture, he had a man walk up to him and say how moved he was by his lecture, as he knew Minor White and was by his bedside before he passed away. His last words were, there's a small boat waiting for me. This affected Jeremy so much that afterwards, when he got home, he made another boat-inspired image that contained a boat on the water being held in someone's hands. That's the image you can see on the right-hand side. After this event, he began to view a boat as a symbol for a spiritual path, and since then he has created many more boat pieces. Many people today recognise Jeremy's work as something you could now create for such softwares as Photoshop. As you can see here by enlarged objects, multiple layers and moving objects around. This could now be created so easily through such softwares as Photoshop, but when Jeremy was doing it in dark rooms, it was very tedious. 
The extent of Jeremy's success can be seen by just how much he's achieved over his lifetime. He received a Uhenheim Fellowship in 1967 and a National Endowment for the Art Fellowship in 1972. He is a Fellow of the Royal Photographic Society of Great Britain, a founding member of the Society of Photographic Education and a former trustee of the Friends of Photography. Jeremy's work has been exhibited in more than 100 individual shows in the United States and abroad over the past 30 years. His photography is in the permanent collections of many museums worldwide. My personal response to viewing Jeremy's work was that it certainly did invoke an almost subconscious emotional response. There was nothing glaringly obvious, but I felt an undertone of emotion. While the piece wasn't literally telling me anything, I felt like there was so much to bounce off of and so much to find meaning in. I too noticed that Photoshop can so easily now pull off this result. However, I believe the way you feel for the piece would be altered if it was all digital, as you would be aware that there was far less physical effort that had gone into the piece. Below I've included two of my personal favourites while looking over Jeremy's work. I'm not sure why I like these ones so much. I seem to really like the boat ones. They seem to feel really serene and calming, even though there's rushing water in the left one. Because it's done with such a low exposure rate, it feels really serene as well. Maybe it's also to do with the fact that there's some type of spiritual path and naturally I connect to them. Thank you for taking the time to watch and listen to my presentation today. I hope you found it interesting and also learned a bit more about photography and art. If you have any questions that you'd like to ask about Jeremy or the photography and art that I've shown, please just feel free to ask in the comments.